In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Dear Lord, our God, we thank you for this day allowing us to appear together as we've come together to worship you and glorify your holy name, to receive your pure body and your precious blood, to be able to partake of your holy mysteries, instill within us the love and guidance and grace so we may continue to serve the Lord, to serve you in your vineyard here at St. Stephanos. And as we continue, guide us along the way to make the best decisions to glorify your holy name. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So now... Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to call today, uh, December 20th. Okay. Move a little closer. Okay, we're ready for a general assembly. December 20th, and it's uh, 12.06. Um, Father gave the blessing. I uh, would like to know if we have a quorum. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Okay. Our secretary is not present today. The uh, Paris Council Secretary, who usually takes the minutes for the last few uh, General Assemblies that we have had. And I do have a recording. I just hope it works. Uh, it's a brand new one. We have gotten it for the Paris Council, and we used it a couple of times. I haven't used it. I used it yesterday, and it worked fine. Today, I can't find those folders, but we need a new folder, so hopefully it works. Okay, now according to our bylaws, we should have a paper ballot if we do have any voting, but due to COVID, we are not going to have a paper ballot, but we're gonna go ahead with, uh, if we need to vote, we'll vote with um, show of hands. Okay, uh, first thing in order is the approval of the minutes of November 17th, 2019. Uh, we didn't have a general assembly in the spring, so we'll go back to approve the minutes from last November. Um, you do have, you have the minutes in, by email and you also have them at your seat. So, uh, motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Okay, Maria Gregory approved and I think uh, Doris, Doris Scherer, um seconded. Okay, and we're all in favor of adopting the? Aye. Aye. See hands, show your hands. Okay, so we approve the minutes. Okay, let's see. The next thing on the, the next item of the agenda is the president's report. And I have been reporting every month as I have done the past three years. Every month in the light, I usually put everything that is happening. So I don't want to bore you and go through the same things over again. Uh, but we do have. Uh, a lot of people uh, have been working really hard, um, capital improvements, have been made a lot of things, a lot of improvements around this, the church premises. A multimedia group have made it possible to bring the liturgy to your, and the Bible study to your home, if you cannot come. And the general something you're live right now. And right now? <laughs> okay. Let's see, our food pantry went from once a month to twice a month, and in order to serve you more people needed mm -hmm. assistance. Agoya started to come back, and they had a couple events, social distancing and keeping safe. Uh, we also pledged to give away $20,000 to charities and organizations, and we did that. We sent the last check uh, last week. So there, there are so many people that gave their time, at this critical time to our church, to continue functioning without interruptions. Our stewardship and donations have helped make all this possible. So I just won my report. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for all you've contributed, your time, money, uh, support. Um, for the last nine months, it has been very difficult. And it's great to see so many people here today. In our church, I know back we started with when we stopped, uh, with the, uh, you know, coming to church with COVID, it was like a lockdown pretty much. We started with like five people and we ended up with like 75 now or 65 people coming to church. And we have this hall ready uh, to be utilized if we have an overflow. So it really, it really is great to see you back. And everybody just stay healthy, stay safe. I thank you all. And, um, 
everybody, keep our St. Stephanos families in your prayers. And I wish you a Merry Christmas, a healthy New Year. And that is my report. Uh, next item, uh, we have a treasurer's report. So, Kathy. Everyone, wait a second. George, you twisted it too tight. <laughs> Thank good? you. Yeah, that's good. I just like to repeat again what um, Nikki had said. How humbled and really blessed I am feeling by each and every one of you all my church family, my St. Stephanos church family, all of you in some way have given of your time, talent, and treasure this year. And I'm truly thankful. I said, I just, <laughs> I just want to say, you know, what Nikki had repeated, you know, what Nikki had said. I am truly humbled and blessed from all of you, my church family, in some way, all of you had given of your time, talent, and treasure this year. It was a difficult year for all of us. And all of you had given in some way or another of your time, talent, and treasure to help sustain our church this year. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> may, may God bless you with his peace love and wisdom in the new year. Thank you. <laughs> so with that, I want to start by saying as of Friday, our operating funds from SunTrust checking account was $19,935.92. In our savings account, we had $75,354.22. And the new account that we opened up, Iberia account, was $10,000. We opened that account because um, we had uh, applied for and received PP funds through Iberia account on May, May 8th, 20 of this year. And we received $21,344.27. We're still waiting to, um, uh, I'm, still, I'm still waiting to receive uh, from Samantha McDermott, who is the VP of Iberia Bank to, um, to uh, follow up with me to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now, <laughs> to, yeah, to, yeah, from the uh, Iberia Bank, we are going to, um, I'm sorry, uh, you think you're the PPE, the PPP the application, yeah. yeah, no, we're not, we're not doing, you know, we're going to apply for the forgiveness application loan, but she is the, um, she's going to be emailing me the application so we can move forward with that the, for the forgiveness application loan. And I'm just waiting for her to do that. And, and uh, she, she's going to be forwarding me the application loan, uh, the forgiveness application. So I'm just waiting for her to do that. I, each bank is different. And with them, they want to wait with any, everybody that has um, applied with them. They don't want to, you just, apply, you know, for the forgiveness application loan, they want you to, they want to submit the application to each individual person that applied through them. So I have to wait until they get, submit me the application to, to move forward with the application loan. But um, at this time, any organization that received funds under 50,000 will be forgiven the loan if they submit the paperwork showing funds that were used for payroll and utilities within the allotted time frame, which is eight or 24 weeks. So, hope, you know, we're not gonna be paying any, anything back, any interest or anything for the loan that we received with them. Um, if you guys, I don't know if you received um, the income that we received this year 
for January through November 2020, the stewardship amount was $161,962. The donations that we received were $41,447. The candles and the, tr the candles were $15,501 and the trays were $3,847. The total amount of income was $222,758. And the funds for, from the PP were $21,344. The total income for the years to date um, from January to November was 430,000. Yeah, we did good. <laughs> so the total expenses though, because we had upkeep and repairs were 91,000 and the pre-salaries was 76,000, you know, the payroll was 96,000, church office ex expenses were 13,000, the archdiocese was 44,000, church services 24,000, charitable donations we had given 14,000 this year, insurance 10,000, utilities 35,000. So the expenses this year were 407,000, which le led us with a profit to loss was 87,000. But we accomplished a lot this year, just like um, Nikki had said. You know, we had a lot of capital improvements that we did this year. But we, you know, we did a lot of improvements that needed to get done. We had a lot of, thankfully, a lot of donors that give that also helped with a, a lot of things that we needed to get done in the church. So I think that given the circumstances with the COVID year, that we did very well. and. I'm, I'm happy with what we accomplished this year, given all the circumstances that we had. So I'm, I'm happy with everyone. And I think that next year that we're going to, that we're going to do good too. So we have a wonderful priest that God blessed us with. And I think that we're going to be very, going to do good. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions? Yes, Doris. I think so. I think it's in the in the isn't it in the bulletin this this one? Yes. Uh, this one we we'll be putting in the bulletin. It's not ready. Um, it's not ready when we have the uh, the uh, our Paris Council meeting. You know for that that you know for that particular month. So we always have the month before. So this is the November that was presented to us. Um, for that December. We present in December. And it, it wasn't quite ready. It's not ready like at the very beginning when we get the light. So this one, actually, we're going to update and we're going to give it, we'll bring it up in uh, January. Yeah. So we're trying to get them at least every couple months. We'll put, you know, for the one, for the month before that closed the, uh, the account. Yes, Maria. Okay. So we have Maria Gregory. I'm just going to repeat it for the just in case. <laughs> so Maria Gregory, um, motion to accept the report, and George Clements, oh, uh, oh, Dora yeah. Comlinos, uh, second the motion, everybody? Aye. Aye. In agreement, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the, George, did you want something? No, I was just, okay. they wouldn't vote so fast. <laughs> All in favor. I want to make sure this was a legal election. <laughs> All in favor, accepting the report, I know we second. Okay. We had, so we vote for approval. We have a we have a we have a motion. We have a, the motion made. We had a second. All in favor? Thank you. Well, I just did it again. Uh, okay, the next one is the uh, budget. That's all right. I'm not going to be here. Okay, the next one. The next one is. Don't worry. Okay. Stephanie is nice and tall, so no problem. <laughs> so the next one is the budget for the proposed budget for 2021. Okay. Can everybody hear me? No. It's on. It's on. Can you hear me? No. Not on. I'll just try and talk very loudly. Is that okay? Ron, you going to do it? 
Okay, that's not good. It was. <laughs> All right, I'll just, I'll do my best to speak very loudly. If anyone doesn't hear me at any point, raise your hand so that I can be able to accept and answer your question. Is there a hand raise already? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, good, mor good morning or afternoon. I don't even know what time it is. Afternoon, good afternoon. So going along with what Kathy said, we looked at about $430,000 income. The budget that I'm presenting to you today is approximately $430,000. It's $428,000, uh, 50% of which is salaries, uh, which is appropriate for an organization, an organizational budget. When I look at the budget that I handle at the VA, it's 50% of salaries. Same thing here with the church. So there's nothing out of line with our budget. Uh, the remaining expenses, so when you look at the budget, like uh, we present in accordance with what the diocese asks us to do. So we only present expenses. So we had to pay attention to a little bit about income, what Kathy just said, and now I'm explaining to the expenses, which are very, pretty much equal. Um, the other large expenses besides salaries that are needed to operate the church are our allocation, which is a requirement, which is in the thirty-eight dollars to $40,000 range. That never goes away. We need that to be part of the archdiocese. Um, our upkeep, which last year we did at least $70,000 at the time of the budget when I did it in upkeep. We were only able to do that because of um, the support and the prep from Father John. Um, he had a, re a reduced salary because he was a part-time priest. So we went ahead and took the balance of what a typical salary would be and applied that to one-time expenditures to, to take care of the church. Much needed things. Okay. Okay. So. Just back up one. I just want to give you room so you're not tripping over the board. All right. Much better. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I want to go back to the remaining expenses that are needed to operate the church besides our largest one, which is salaries. I talked about the allocation, which is, I'm talking in round figures, so they might be a little bit higher than what you see on here. So $40,000, easy to remember for the allocation. Um, upkeep, we put in $50,000 this year planned. Um, and some of the planned things that we have on here are um, entrance tiles in the education, uh, protection for the church windows, marble in the hall entry, and church carpet. Uh, and the other largest expense that we have are our utilities, which are around $37,000. All of those things are things that we can't do without. Um, so if you want to take a look at from one year over to the next, in 2019, when I proposed the 2020 budget, I uh, estimated at $382,000. We actually came in closer to the three ninety three dollars to four hundred at the time of the budget. So when I did this, I was putting it together in August, September timeframe. Um, and we had a, about $11,000 increase. Um, that was due to a lot of the upkeep and repairs that we did. So if you want to compare actual to plan or plan to plan, we're looking in the $35,000 to $45,000 range increase. What is that? That's the difference um, in the salary cost. So we're looking at having a full-time priest who's with us all the time that'll help support us um, in, many other, in, in many, many ways. So that is the big difference in the budget. It's a very, it's a fairly simple budget. Um, there's not a lot that we can cut out if we do need to. Um, maybe we cut back on our upkeep, and I don't really know where else we can cut off. So, with that, I present to you a $430,000 budget. Does anyone have any questions about what I said or what's written on the paper? Yes. So just so I'm understanding, if we went back to three years. We're actually a little under what our budget was from three years ago. Yes. Good job. Yeah. Yes. Spirit. So I, um, I see a trend that month. So in 2019, we all agreed that we did $10,000 for humanitarian purposes. 2020, we did it. We doubled it. We doubled it to 20. And it's budgeted to be the exact same. Well, the idea from a stewardship perspective is 5% right now of our operating income 
is going out, which is half of what a traditional tithe might be. What I'm proposing is, even if it's just uh, academic, uh, not to keep it the same, to keep going forward and have an increasingly humanitarian line going forward, because that's what this church is about. That's what we're here for. So whether it's 5, 10, 15 percent increase from prior, and we'll make it up somewhere else. Yes? I, I like where Spear is going with it. I like it a lot. Um, just because of the aspect, Spear, we've got to figure out how to make up the money from the festival. We'll do it. I think that uh, if we can't do it this year, we should definitely look towards doing it. That's my suggestion. In 2022, I guess. This is 2021? This is 2021, yeah. yeah. I was very conservative. I'm always conservative when I'm putting budgets together. So I thought at least do it exactly the same because we're not going to have a festival this year. Well, that's, no, we that's don't know that. that. Oh, we don't know. Yeah, we we yeah. may not. We're looking to replace the money some way, shape, or form. We will find right. some way to yeah. money into this church in the third place. I have point. Like, the goal will be the same, Stephanie. The goal okay. will be to replenish what we've been making every year some way, shape, or form. What do you so think? So I always line. What is what is what is the amount? Change yeah, twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, I'll make the argument against it that I'll stick with that as an argument. I think okay. that makes sense to wait one year on that. And Charlie? I'd like to propose an amendment. Uh, we say increase the uh, the outgoing money, the money we're gonna donate, provided that the funds are in. That's fair. Okay. So we had. I accept the proposal. Do you accept that as a second? I accept that as a second. Door second. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay, then motion passed. I'll make the adjustment. It went out again. A date that what? Oh, for the fall, by the fall general assembly then. Okay. And Harriet, did you have something? Upping it by 5,000 from 20 to 25,000 if the funding is there. The decision will be made at the fall general assembly next year. Do we have to vote? Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Please keep them straight up, very high. And anybody, we're counting. We're to keep them up so we can continue to count. The majority. Okay. It is the majority. Ask for the names. I have the yes, and can I have the uh, oppose? Okay, great. None. Okay. Um, do we have anything else, any other questions or comments about the budget? Yes, Spiro. Okay, so Charlie has done a tremendous job with the Capital Improvement Committee. But this hall, not one dollar has been put into this hall, which is not only our gathering living room for our family, but it's also the possible great source of income for our church. So what I would ask, and I don't think this would be added in, is maybe a focus on the idea of the next project being this fall. Well, there is a sec there is a section of capital improvements on the agenda today. It's coming up after the audit. Okay. So maybe can you bring that up when Charlie oh, goes to cap sorry. thank you. So far, we just we just voted on this to, to the twenty five thousand. No, no, no. I meant on the budget. On the budget. No, I want to make sure that we do. We have any other questions specific to the budget? What I have proposed to you and what you see on the piece of paper there. Great. Okay. I, I, 
So I'd like to move to vote to pass the budget. I'll second your motion. Okay. Good. Anybody opposed? Do we want to vote? Do we have to count? Do we have to do the counting? This is four. four. If you want, it's again 22 yays and no nays. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Bill Krajewski. Bill. With me on audit committee. Yashes. Father Sampson, Madam President, members of the parish council, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hello? It's, it's not, I'm trying, but I don't think this is working again. New mics. <laughs> what did you do before? I used a different cord. <laughs> I know, but I'm the connection. Oh, there we go. We're back online. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to hold it so I don't break it. On behalf of the audit committee members, Stephanie Fanonopoulos, Eric Franksburg, Franksburg. I don't think Eric is here today, but he was part of our team and myself. I want to share with all of you an overview of the audit committee's field work performed for the fiscal year ending December 2019. The recommendations we identified are areas that need improvement and we have completed our field work and we are in the process of formally presenting our written report to the parish council for the review and acceptance. <clears throat> Before I get into the audit committee's actual report for 2019, I want to commend the prior audit team's work that covered the years 2017 and 2018. Uh, I, don't, I didn't see Nicole. Nicole was part of that team. Christine, I saw Christine earlier. I don't know if she's still here. There she is in the back. And Eric. They took on a tremendous body of work and the results of their work set forth the strong foundation to establish policies and procedures to be followed going forward to protect the assets and property as well as the financial stability of the parish. Also, we want to recognize Father John Stefaro for his strong leadership and unwavering commitment during the past two years to address serious issues confronting our parish to promote effective governance of the parish activities at all levels our parish will forever be in his. His death. Sorry. So I want to put everyone's mind at ease. The 2019 audit committee did not find any material issues with the financial record keeping of the parish. The majority of our recommendations centered around the establishment of improvements to process and procedures to be followed as outlined in the Archdiocese Uniform Parish Regulations, the UPR, the Archdiocese Youth Protection Act, the 2019 Parish Bylaws, as well as best business practices associated with improving record keeping and procedural internal controls. The Audit Committee chose multiple transactions associated with the 2019 fiscal year and the following and related to the following income and expenditures expenses that were approved in the parish budget expenses outside the parish budget checks paid credit card transactions payroll transactions bank deposits and irs filings and related payments the following is a summary of the most significant areas of concerns and our recommendations inventory of the parish assets now this has been something that i think we've talked about in the past and was a recommendation by the prior audit committees to perform a physical inventory, including taking pictures of building church assets, the icon, icon, iconography, as well as the kitchen equipment. And this must be done or should be done because our insurance policy is up for renewal on February 27, 2021. 
renewal of the property insurance policy and coverage, we're recommending that we hire an actuary once this inventory is completed to properly value the assets to ensure that adequate property insurance is covered, as well as bring in maybe an additional broker to make sure that we've got a competitive price. Background checks. Timely annual processing of level two background checks will be completed for everyone working with the youth. We're also recommending that background checks be performed for key individuals involved with the collection and or disbursement of parish funds. This includes, for example, the parish council members who sign checks, our bookkeeper, and individuals who manage the collection of cash during church events. Cash collection at church sponsored events. Reassess the process for tracking and collecting revenues and expenditures for all purchases and donations, such as goods, food, so on and so forth, and that we track in one place all of the specific items, vendors, product descriptions, quantity, rate, total value, and this list will be used and submitted as supporting documentation for any reimbursements that are requested. Conflicts of related transaction, excuse me, party transaction disclosure policy statement. This is something that's actually in the UPR. Prior to or at the commencement of a new term and annually thereafter, all members of the parish council and key parish employees shall be given a copy of the stated statement and they shall complete and sign this statement. Roles and responsibilities of the parish council. We need documentation that should be prepared which outlines in detail the duties of everyone that is in charge of issuing required reports or specific filings. This would include the parish council members, key employees, and this way will ensure that everyone understands their roles and responsibilities in carrying out those roles and responsibilities. Advisory committees. Um, in the bylaws, we had established three committees be uh, formed. Uh, there still needs to be a finance and advisory board set up and routinely have meetings to, as, it, as relates to what is stipulated in the parish bylaws. And last but not least, committee meeting minutes. Minutes reporting must follow standard guidelines and provide for complete and timely record. Also, the minutes of each of these meetings should be available and accessible to anyone who has any questions. That's our report. Any questions? Thank you. We move to accept the report. I did. Ron moved to accept the report. Thank you. And Charles second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Oh. Doors? Thank you to the audit committee. Okay, the next one is capital improvements. Charles? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Father, welcome to our community. This is your official first function, other than the liturgy. I wanna, I wanna thank, oh, you're gonna hear me. Don't worry about that when it comes to important parts. Uh, <coughs> I want to thank all of you for turning out on a day like this. As a matter of fact, I was willing to bet my wife that we're not going to have a quorum today. So I take it back and I apologize. <laughs> Members of the Paris Council and you, the born of our community. As we all know, we were faced with the uh, coronavirus this year and turned us upside down. But if you look at it in any kind of calamity, there's always a bright side. And I'm looking at the bright side. With people not coming to the church and the church being closed down, we were able to do a lot of projects that we were not gonna do before. Also, I like to think, besides their generosity, 
The great donors that they donated huge amounts of money, they could not go out and spend it, so they gave it to the church. So you see, there is a bright side on the uh, coronavirus. Uh, we had a busy year, and of course, like everything else, I was operating with a skeleton crew. Most of the time, I call up my committee members, and uh, I will propose something, we'll hush it out, and then we'll turn it to the council. Uh, this, is, this is the way the Capital Improvements Committee works. And by the way, anyone from you or any parishioner, if you would like to propose something, you get it to me, and we, it's going to take its course. Basically, what we do is we'll pass it by the, uh, the Capital Improvements Committee members. We iron that out, take out the bad parts, put the positive things in, then we present it to the council when the council approves it. Then, before I even go to the council, I try to find somebody to fund the project, if possible, and then we go to the council, and once they approve it, then we do the other uh, work. With that in mind, these are the items that we completed in 2020. And this, I have broken them down for convenience. All these items that I'm gonna mention, six items that will pay with church funds. The funds have been identified who pay what. Messy termite, we tended the three buildings and we spray them for termites, 26,000, the church pay for that. We had to rent a refrigeration truck so we can put the food, we had to move all the, uh, the food out of the building. We put the food in there, that was $706. We, with the uh, pantry, with the food pantry getting busy, uh, the ladies were complaining because the AC, we have a separate AC for the so-called salad room, but actually it's for the uh, pantry, most of it. We close, we close the curtain in between, we install a new unit, Orion Heating, which is one of our, uh, proposed to the council that we try to help our stewards, the small businessmen. We got uh, Jimmy Vuturis, who's the, uh, the owner of Orion Heating, and. That was $4,000 for the new air conditioning unit. It's been working great. Then Father John proposed, he didn't like the, uh, well, the carpet was in a bad shape anyway, in the altar and whatever other place we had or the nothing. So we removed the carpet and we refinished the terrazzo floor, floors and that was $8,048. That was paid by church money. Then when we decided to upgrade the, uh, the two offices, in the educational building, mainly the secretary and the uh, bookkeeper. We painted the walls and, you know, we did it in-house with our own workers. And we, the JB carpet, we got the flooring and that was $2,393. The church paid for that. We put at the beginning of the year, we put a new sign out on 38, a new church sign and a long and behold in Italy uh, I don't know if it was a lady or a gentleman, doesn't make any difference. She had a medical problem and flattened out our, uh, our signs. So I went to uh, a good uh, steward, Ron Gregory, being an attorney. I says, can, we, can I get you an estimate and go to the insurance to replace the sign? And then uh, Dora Comlinos suggested to me, she says, since the insurance might pay, why don't we go with a reflective sign for the evening? so we can see it at night. I says, great idea. So I got a package together of uh, six, let's see. It was $640, $612, something like that, $640. So the insurance did pay for, the, uh, for that uh, replacement, $614. Uh, and all, all this amount up to now, it was paid by the church. Then we did a few uh, purchases. We purchased a lawnmower, a push mower that the, uh, the grass cutter, our own maintenance team, can get to the uh, areas. We have some areas around the sign, the flag plaza, and other places that could not get there with the tractor. So that was uh, $169. We got a spreader that we needed for the, uh, to maintain the loan, that was $166. We got a vacuum cleaner, because the vacuum cleaner quit, $235. And we got a small buffer, so the, uh, the maintenance guy can get underneath the pews and the church floor, and has been doing a tremendous job with it. That was $435. All these expenses that I just mentioned, they came out of church money. Now we're going to the donors. 
No, I'm sorry. We have two repairs by the church. We had a water main right at the second gate by the end of the parking lot. So we had to locate the, uh, the leak. It was underground. We had to locate the leak and repair it. And that was $412 that was paid to slaughter plumbing. And uh, the walk-in cooler, the refrigerator, the freezer, has been a problem ever since we had it installed a couple of years ago. And the guys that they installed it are different uh, people that they came down to service it. It seemed like they did it. I will get two, three weeks, and then it will break down again. We lost quite a, quite a bit of meats in there that we were storing. And uh, Louis Kokinakos very graciously has spent quite a bit of money, I think probably over the excess of $10,000 on his pocket, upgrading all the equipment. Uh, you put new compressor and everything else they needed on the cooler, and that didn't do it. <laughs> that didn't do it. So when the last, the repair man that we were using, when he came in and he went over and he comes over and I says to him, I wanna see what you're replacing. And he brings me the two little parts. And I says to him, that's the ones you replaced two weeks ago. And I says, if the same, he says, well, they keep going. I says, if they keep going, there's a reason for it. So I got in touch, Olivia uh, Petrov suggested the, uh, the maintenance guy that she has for roof freezers and we, Invite him to look at it. His name is, well, he goes on the right now, refrigeration. He come in, he spent almost the whole day and he traced everything and he says to me, no wonder you're losing him. He says the, the unit has been wired wrong. So he rewired it. We had no problem for two, three weeks. And then we had the power outage. We dropped one of the face lines out there and that kind of burned up a couple other things. So he had to come, ba come back. He came a total of three times and it charges $464, and the unit has been running over a month, which is a new record, it's been running over the month with no, no problem. So I think we corrected that problem. Now, the following things is uh, yeah, they pay by uh, donations, and most of it is from one steward family. They were the big donors, and then we have some other ones that they chip some money for other little things. We put the... Uh, surveillance cameras all over the building. And we used to have a lot of alarm tripping for, di for different people will come in and nobody, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. So after I got the cameras approved, I told everybody they had a key. If you set the alarm, we have you on, uh, we have you on film. We never had a false alarm except a couple of times that they lucky that the quiet director into the priest and, and they were not aware. So that cost us six thousand four hundred and ten dollars and fifty cents that was donated no church funds uh we put after we spent about fifteen thousand dollars on the landscape we realized that we needed something to upkeep him so we put a sprinkler system in we have a complete sprinkler system on all everything that's planted on the ground has got an individual sprinkler on it and that cost us three thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars and that was paid by a donor uh, we had the flying locksmith. He came and he replaced all the hardware on the doors in the church. And also they took the doors out, they fixed them. And I think we have the trestle on the south side door. It's gotta be replaced. They haven't come back yet. They have it on order. So that was $9,632 and that was paid by a donor. Uh, we, and then the, uh, the Goya proposed to us that they, had, they were going to have a meeting and they wanted to have a little picnic out in the back and they, wanted, they were trying to get to buy five tables. The picnic tables, which you probably saw, we're going to use them when we have coffee. If anybody doesn't feel comfortable being in the church, he can go outside of the picnic tables. That was $350. We bought five of them at the price of $1,750 and that was paid by a donor. Uh, when the uh, when the festival, our festival, when we had it in the spring, we had two individuals out of the workers that we had hired, and they really stood out as hard workers. So after the festival was over, we needed some work, and uh, we kind of proposed to the council, how about we hire these two individuals for a couple of months on a, on a, on a temporary basis? We hire a maintenance guy for the, uh, the grounds, and we hire a, uh, a custodian, I guess, for the inside. And every day it will amaze us. 
because this guys went further and further and further. It's what started like a part time, it became a, a, a full time. We kept him, as a matter of fact, Bill Springer, who was the other uh, maintenance guy, I just let him go last week because we completed all the projects outside. And the majority of their, uh, their salaries were paid by the government. At the beginning, if you remember, you could protect up to five employees, the president, the, uh, the treasurer, Father John, and also the bookkeeper got together. We put everybody on the payroll and we got most of the money reimbursed by the government. Among the, uh, I'm gonna touch a few things that we did repair. We rebuilt the shelters in the back. We put a new roof on and we paint them. We repaired the three walls on the, uh, on the shed, the maintenance shed, because actually you could walk in, although the walls were just collapsing. We beautified the, the grounds, we painted three sides of the hole, the walls on it. Uh, we did the rear of the educational building, and we, we put the parking lot signs in and painted the curves. And also we repaired the window sills for some unexplained reason, but the concrete was really crumbling all around the educational building. So we rebuilt those, secure them and paint them. So that's the report. And <laughs> Take your mask off please so I can hear you. I didn't, but I, you know, I didn't, but we're gonna publish this on the light. I didn't, I didn't do the troubles because I'm a last I'm a last minute person. I did this last night. And like I said, I'll take proposals from anybody. Spiro, if you want to submit proposal for the whole, get it to me. Okay? And anybody else? Anybody else has any other questions? Thank you, and Madam President, I submit for my, for the part of the meeting. Okay, um, this one, it was just information only, so we don't have to do anything, we just accept his report. Um, and the next one, Father? All right. We should add Mike to the capital for this budget. First proposal. We're not even getting feedback, that's on. Uh, Correct. Check on that thing. Sorry, Father. It's all good. <laughs> Probably. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. It was a. Uh, it's been a wonderful parish assembly so far. Um, my comments are: I'm unbelievably happy to be here. Um, it's been an interesting journey of mine, of course. Um, which has led me to this point, but it's a wonder, so far everyone has been above and beyond amazing. Um, and one of the things I was, I've been sharing with Nikki is, I don't think people actually know the treasure what we got here. Um, between obviously uh, our beautiful facilities, I mean, even I've been on this campus before I actually have now been assigned here. I've been on this campus multiple times. We have an amazing educational building, unbelievably amazing educational building. Um, that we can easily show off. Um, but most importantly, but even everything that we have, our entire facilities, thank you again, Charlie, and to the, the entire committee. Um, but to all of you, the upkeep and love that you share the, the facilities is what makes this place different. Um, you know, obviously in the last years, you know, we, I just, I, I can't thank Father John enough. Um, as someone who came in, um, I know that there's been turnover and stuff like that in the past and whatnot, and Father John came in, and was able to, to hopefully mend um, any type of difficulties that that might have arisen, but most importantly, to, to kind of rejuvenate everything, um, to see what y'all have done. Like, right, I did none of this. I'm just the inheritor of the fruits of your labor, and it's amazing to see the work that you guys have done, um, and it shows the love and passion that you have for this community. So in a sense of, well, what do we have to offer? We can only go up from here at this point. We've been growing, you guys have been growing and it's just gonna continue growing. Um, and we're gonna have some ministries. At the beginning of the year, the Metropolis, um, I, from what I was told, we were gonna have a meeting to figure out how we can take the next steps to appropriately open things up um, more to what they are now in regards to COVID and just keeping everyone safe. I wanna thank for everyone's 
you know, understanding on, on all the different things. I'm sure the last year was a learning experience as it was for myself as well, even though I was at a different location. Um, but we're going to continue to be able to open things up. And that obviously brings up a very important conversation of, well, what I'm not comfortable doing this, this or this, or uh, why don't we do more? And it's, it's, that's not what it's about. It's about keeping everyone safe, every one of our family members safe, and also being respectful of everyone's desires, of, of everyone's comfort level of masks and distances and so on as we move forward. Um, so I just ask and, and plead to continue being loving and respecting as you guys have sh shown as well. Um, everything's been amazing so far. Um, the liturgical life of our church is great. We want to thanks to the choir, to the chanters. Um, you know, we have a really, we have all, everything. We have everything. We have every, every team, everything in place. And it's getting together and just constantly doing the work and staying focused and continuing our growth, whether it be for facilities or whether it be for whatever it is, ministries. Um, there's a lot of exciting things that are already happening here that I get to witness as a priest, as the, as the new person. Um, and then there's hopefully the opportunity that, that will come of us growing together. Um, and that will not just be in a sense of numbers or this or that, right? I'm not worried about the tangible aspects of what church life brings. I'm only worried about the intangibles. I'm worried about the things that we see and do, the things that we don't see, um, meaning ourselves, our spirituality. Um, it's very important. Sometimes we get lost in the hustle bustle of trying to get more people and trying to do this and trying to do that. And we look at dollar signs or we look at numbers, right? And I was having this conversation with someone um, that as a priest, when we celebrate divine liturgy, there's, I have to have one person other than myself, right? If I have a liturgy as a priest, same priest, but there's a thousand people present, is the liturgy greater or less than? It's a rhetorical question. The answer is they're the same. The divine liturgy is the same. So the quality of the divine liturgy, the honest prayer and love that's shown in the divine liturgy, whether one person is present or a thousand people present, that doesn't change anything. So the same thing with ministry, whether it be young adults, whether it be young kids or whether it be adults. And, you know, I know Father John, for example, was doing a Bible study. We will continue that towards the beginning of the year as well. It's one of those things where whether one person shows up or a thousand people show up, these things are going to happen. So, for example, when someone says, not someone has said, but I'm just saying, when someone says, Father, why are we cooling down the entire building because two people showed up to whatever it is, Bible study? Well, guess what? That one person decided to show up to Bible study, so we need the electricity, we need to function. The ministry still happens, whether it's one person or whether it's a thousand people. Nothing gets diluted because of numbers, because why? That one person, and I'll share with you, in Pensacola, I had one Goyen, literally one Goyen. I had one high school. He was a junior in high school when I first got there. I mean, seriously, one Goyen. So what do you do with a, with, with a Goya? You think there's got to be at least 20, 30 people. You go to the district stuff, and there's like hundreds of kids running around. One Goyen. So I looked at this, this young gentleman who also was one of our altar leaders, and I was like, well, we are Goya. What do you want to do? <laughs> and we figured it out. I mean, we went and got coffee. We, we were able to spiritually go with one another. Um, and that's, that's something intangible, something that you don't see. So when someone sees, oh, Father only has one Goyan, or the St. Stephanos or whatever, Annunciation at that church only has one Goyan, they think that that Goya program isn't successful or that ministry isn't successful. And I'm going to share with you what defines ministry as a success or as parish as a success is how we grow spiritually together to do everything that we do to glorify God. That is what defines the success or lack of success of ministry, of church functioning, of parish life, of whatever. So I don't care about numbers. I don't care about dollar signs. The money will come. The people will come and they will go if they want to go. And the same thing with money. The money will come and it will go if they want to go. But if they have a full buy-in of what we do here at St. Stephanos, of continuously figuring out every possible way to glorify God, whether it's through worship or through ministry, then they're going to stay. 
And if they're here for something else, for whatever it is, tchotchkes, or if they're here for whatever we're handing out during the year, or if they're here for some type of other issue that might have happened at another church, whether orthodox or not orthodox, our job as Christians is to show that person love. As people who are visiting the church, as they come, we share them love. And if they end up coming just because of something else and some other reason, and it's a little time, okay, thank you for coming. And if it's because they end up staying, even more wonderful. Then the parish grows. But it's not growing because we're actively seeking to bring people in. It's not what one person can do, right? It's not what a priest does. A priest doesn't go and bring people in. The priest shows them love, that God loved the world, and uses that same love and compassion and mercy and grace. And that is how people can come closer, not to the church, this church. It's not my job to go find numbers, right? If that was my job, I'd be a recruiter. I'd be probably doing college football recruiting. I wouldn't be standing here in front of a congregation. But that's, what service does that do? Nothing. There's a difference between being a recruiter and being someone who empowers people in their faith and through that experience also gets empowered. That's what I'm here to do as a priest, as a pastor, as the proistamonos. That is my job. As deacon, it's deacon's job. Yeah, it's your job too. Don't worry, you're not off the hook because you're sitting over there. No, you're, you, but he knows, we, we joke and I kid. And you'll see that, I have humor. Um, but most importantly, it's not about those aspects. So when we think about numbers, right? We were talking about an entire budget. The money will figure itself out. I can promise you that because I've seen it happen with my own eyes where all of a sudden, miraculously, we just filled an $80,000 deficit. It happened in Pensacola, it's happened in Tarpon, it's happened in St. Demetrius and Fort Lauderdale, it's happened everywhere I've been. Somehow, the money always figures itself out. But that's not the point. The point is, is how did we grow together? What did we learn about our faith? How can we continue to inspire ourselves and continue chugging along on the difficult journey of our spirituality? That's the intangible that people don't see. So I'm not worried about numbers, whether they be money or people. I'm worried about souls. I'm worried about you all and myself, of course, and our families, all of our families coming together, being unified as one parish family, and in that parish family glorifying God. So when people ask, well, what is your vision for this? Well, that's a good question. What is the vision for this? So I'm going to leave you with one question that you can answer if you feel like today, right? Sometimes I ask rhetorical questions, and then sometimes I ask questions I want an answer to. So I'm going to to give you an opportunity. We talked a little bit on Thursday when I was announced that I was coming here. And some of the people that are here are already here. But some people weren't able to be there. Is there something that you want to see happen at St. Stephanos? What is one thing that you want to see happen at St. Stephanos that either exists that you want to continue or something that doesn't exist that you want to start? So... One, two. Okay, he defers to you. Free engagement of our Bible study and fellowship, ideally together in fellowship at some point. Okay, perfect. Uh, continue to grow our outreach, our ministry outreach, our, our, for others to help. Okay. Yeah, there, was, there was something I wanted to say when I was standing up before, and I did, because I was reporting just numbers. Sure. And it was something that I read that when we talk about humanitarian giving and it's what we should be doing especially when we think about Christmas time and I thought about this myself we should be feeding the hungry which is what we do what we've been yeah. doing comfort the afflicted love the outcast forgive the wrongdoer and inspire the hopeless absolutely yeah. that's like literally our mission in life mm-hmm. so yes so an, oh, one question that I, another question that I have, maybe it's a logistical one. To anyone's knowledge, is there a master plan for this community? When I mean master plan, I mean like, remember the fun little diagrams, like little Lego diagrams of like what this church looks like campus wise? Something like that, architectural plan. There's no, there's no master plan, but the, sorry. That, I mean, it's a legitimate question, so yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Perfect. I don't think you go have a media capital investment in the Yes. I know, when you say master plan, I don't know if um, when we talked in the audit committee, as part of the bylaws, it says that we're supposed to have a, a finance and what they call it? advisory. advisory committee. Correct. I know we tried to have one in the past back when I was on Harris Council, but I don't know that, that that's one thing that we have. And maybe that would be the place for us to have a master plan. For sure. That's also a very large part of the master plan. The whole point of my question is just to acknowledge that we have still a lot of work to do and that we can't stay stagnant. And I don't see that, right? I'm just, I'm just sharing the, the concept here, right? I don't, I don't see people wanting to stop or wanting to con discontinue the growth that's happened. But sometimes people get tired, okay? And it gets exhausting when it falls on one person or two people or three people or four people. But sometimes we really love being that person where we want to do this, we're taking it head on, and we don't want anyone, we don't want it to be for this. And I'm not saying that I'm getting any of that vibe from anyone either. What I'm saying is, is that we all have to come together, right? Even the people that aren't here, right? There's plenty of people that aren't here today, and there's some people that are even on the, on the live stream, that we have to start bringing together to have a sense of buy-in to whatever that vision is, whatever that mission is. And so I'm not discussing a strategic plan, so don't worry, Spiro. There's no strategic plan that we're, gonna, we're not going to go through an entire process. But we have to ask ourselves very common questions that people discuss during a strategic plan or that they discuss during these growth periods of how can we continue. And so there's a lot of self-reflection that comes in that as a parish. So I've done as best as I could to try to meet with as many people before Christmas. Um, I've met with a lot of committee members. Um, there's still meetings that are still going to happen. Um, before the holidays, but it's going to continue one because so I can get to know everyone. Of course, I'm horrific with names and everyone I've met so far is named George. So <laughs> other than the some people that I know. So so for if your name is George, you're lucky because I'm going to default to George. So for for those who are men. Um, but in, in that case, it's one of those things where it's going to take time to get to know one another. Um, I'm honored and also just very happy to have that opportunity to serve alongside Deacon John as well as the Alconisa and my wife and everyone that's here in the ministry teams and those who could not be here. Um, you know, it's a very exciting time period, of course, within the church, having Christ's Nativity coming up soon. Um, but it's something even as we continue and move on to Pascha and all the years and years and years um, I hope to be here for a very long time. So uh, you don't have any worries on that part. Um, so I want to thank you all. If there's anything that you ever have, suggestions, questions, whatever it is, my phone number will eventually literally be everywhere. Um, I know it's on the bulletin. I saw it. My email's there as well. Feel free to email me. Feel free to call me for whatever it is. I want you to know something too, just as a side note. Um, it's okay for the priest to visit people in the hospital even when they're not dying. Some people get really weirded out about the priest showing up for like whatever it is, a physical therapy thing or whatever it might be. I want you to know it's totally normal for me to come visit. So for example, if I see, if I'm at the hospital and I'm visiting somebody and I see someone else's name on there that I recognize, I'm going to go visit them. So you're not dying if I show up. All right. I just want you to know that. Um, but it's important. And then also... The second thing, logistically speaking, that I have to share, and then I'm done, is you'd be surprised at how many people attend our church that are Orthodox and aren't Orthodox. You'd be very surprised. And so one, of course, as welcoming as this community is, it's one of those things, even then you'd still be surprised. So if you know of someone, and I kid you not, this has happened every single place where I've been, who's been to this church for longer than one to two years and is not orthodox and i mean this seriously now someone who's been to this church for more than one to two years who is not orthodox but consistently comes i want to meet them i'm because i'm inspired to figure out how they've stayed somewhere so long without fully participating in the faith 
I had somebody in Tarpon Springs came to the church for 38 years of the 42 of them being married. 38 straight years. Every Sunday. Never became Orthodox. You want to know why? Because nobody asked. Pensacola. There was a family that came for an entire family. A big family. 12 people deep. That came to church every Sunday. So I asked. You come here every Sunday. You're here. Some of them even came during the weekdays. And I was like, guys, you know, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's a monastic thing. Maybe their spiritual father said, maybe re- restrict yourself from communion for a little bit. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not their spiritual father. At that point, I was new. I was like, but I see you at all these things. Well, you're not coming up to receive communion. Are you, are you Orthodox? Are you not Orthodox? What's, what's, what's happening here? And they were quite literally like, well, Father, we're not Orthodox. It's like, how can you go to a place for three years and not fully participate in the church? And they're like, well, no one really asked. I'm asking. I need you to ask. If you see people, not be, don't, don't, not in a sense, don't watch people come and receive communion or not. What I mean is, if you know of people that exist like that, whether it's through marriage or where it's someone who's just come to the church, I want to know them. I want to get to know them. To one, to hear their story, but also see where they're at spirituality speaking. And if this is something that's really for them. So you'd be surprised how many people exist already on top of what we can do elsewhere to evangelize. And evangelization is a part of what we do as Orthodox Christians. So it is our duty as, as, as you hear, right? The Great Commission, go make disciples of all nations. So this is what I have for you all. These are some of the things that I hope that we can, as we continue growing together, Um, We have the opportunity to do these things hand in hand. So may God bless you all. I know that was really long-winded, but I think I'm the last one, right? I'm the last one. So let's at least close in a prayer, then we'll have the final adjournment. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Dear Lord our God, as you come to us this day, be with us and guide us and strengthen us so we can continue to serve the church here of St. Stephanos, but most importantly to our greater community to continue to serve them for those that are hungry, for those that are thirsty, for those who need clothing, for those who are all struggling within the world, that we can be a prayerful presence, if not a physical presence in their lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen. See if it's working. I think you need an adjournment. Well, that's all right. Uh, Okay, we've got it. I just wanted to. I just wanted to say thank you, Father, for those inspiring words. I mean, we're looking forward to our future, and I want to thank you all for coming and actually getting our general assembly done, and we're finished. Have a merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have a good one. Really?